Coming your way on Celtics today, we're going to take a look at another Kemba Walker trade idea. Also, did Brad Stevens lose the locker room last year as the head coach of Boston? And we're going to bring you the latest on his search for his replacement. But first, make sure you turn on those notifications. Only 19% of the more than 5,000 of you who are subscribed to Celtics today have the notifications on. So for instance, if a Kemba Walker trade does happen, you will be notified. Just hit that bell. Welcome into Celtics Today by Chat Sports. I am Chase Senior, a jam packed show coming your way here on the channel. And I want to start off with looking at another Kemba Walker trade idea. Now, last week, I cooked up something looking at a swap between Kemba Walker and Kristaps Porzingis. And that trade makes total sense because the salaries for both players make sense. They're in the mid 30s, high 30s in terms of millions of dollars on their contracts. And I think each player would fill a need on their new teams. Kemba Walker would fit seamlessly in with Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks. Kristaps Porzingis, on the other hand, fulfills a need on the Boston Celtics. The trade idea we're going to look at comes your way from Hardwood Houdini, and I think it's pretty fascinating because they proposed this potential trade. The Boston Celtics would receive KP, Jalen Brunson, as well as Josh Richardson. The Mavericks in exchange would get back Kemba Walker, Tristan Thompson, Grant Williams, a 2021 first round pick, and two future second round picks. So we're going to look into this trade a little bit further, but first I want to pose this question for you. Would you be down for this trade on your screen right now? Get into the comments, get your votes in, type Y for yes, type N for no. Be sure to get your votes in down below and let me know if you would be down for this trade. My thoughts on it? If Kemba Walker wants out, which is what we covered here last week on Celtics Today, then try to get rid of him. His salary is prohibitive if the franchise wants to build around Jalen Brown as well as Jason Tatum. So if he does indeed want out, then get him out of here. And it is my hope, it would be Brad Stevens' hope and Celtics fans' hope that Kristaps Porzingis would be able to turn it around after what has been somewhat of a rocky stint with the Dallas Mavericks. He does, as I mentioned, fill a huge need in the front court because leading up to the NBA trade deadline, I thought it was a massive hole in the front court that the Celtics needed to address, and they didn't do so by bringing in a legitimate center. I think that's priority number one this offseason. I'm also a huge fan of Jalen Brunson, which I'll get into and expand my thoughts on here in just a little bit. And Josh Richardson didn't have a good year with the Dallas Mavericks. The good news is he would come to Boston on an expiring contract. Let's look into Jalen Brunson a little bit. Huge fan of this player going back to his time at Villanova where he won two national championships. And this past season, in somewhat of a limited sample size, I thought he was really good and I think he's only going to continue to get better and improve his game in a well-rounded fashion. 12.5 points per game, 3.5 assists, shot 52 plus percent from the floor and his three point percentage continues to go up. I think Jalen Brunson is a totally legit player and I actually think that he would fit in really nicely on this current Boston Celtics team. The resume has been there ever since he was a high school recruit. Then he goes to Villanova. He wins two national championships and was named the national player of the year. It was a joke to me that he fell as far as he did in the NBA draft, but he brings leadership. He is a floor general. He's certainly a seamless fit on this roster, aside from Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Most importantly, though, for a franchise that really needs some leadership, I think Jalen Brunson would be able to bring that to the Celtics. It was certainly a rocky experience this past season. A lot of reasons for that. COVID issues, as well as injury issues, too. But I'm not sure the Celtics had a firm leader. That's what Jalen Brunson would be as the floor general and overall leader for this team. And speaking of his fit, it's not a guy who's going to demand a lot of volume in terms of shots. He'll be able to dish it out to Brown and Tatum. So I would love Jalen Brunson back in this deal. That's probably why I give it a thumbs up and I'd be all in on making this trade. But I want to ask you this because obviously I'm speaking glowingly of Jalen Brunson. What should his NBA 2K rating be? Scale it for me from 1 to 100. I know a lot of you like to get on the sticks and you're all big gamers out there. So give Jalen Brunson a 2K rating in the comment section down below. Celtics Today is made possible thanks to our wonderful friends at Newsbreak. How many times have we been going through our phone and we're like, yo, 
I got way too many apps right now. This is somewhat overwhelming. You can be on top of that and you can solve those issues by just downloading the Newsbreak app by going to chatsports.com slash CelticsNB. Here's the other good news. The first 100 of you to comment anything on this video, you can say, yo, Chase, you're the Don. Chase, you're the GOAT. Whatever you want to say in the comment section, do that right now. I will give you that link on the bottom of your screen, and you will be able to download the Newsbreak app for free so that you don't get overwhelmed with having to close out all of those tabs that just become ridiculous on your phone right now. More reasons to download the Newsbreak app by going to chatsports.com slash CelticsNB on one single feed. You get your local news and weather. You get your politics, food, pop culture, and entertainment news. You get your sports content as well. And also, Celtics Today has a page on the news break app. So one more time, chatsports.com slash CelticsNB. If you comment on this video, I will reply to you with that download link. A big topic of conversation since Brad Stevens went from head coach to the president of basketball operations for this franchise is this. Did Brad Stevens lose the locker room last year as the head coach of the Boston Celtics? We're going to explore that further coming up. But first, want to relay this Shams report on Brad Stevens and the trouble that he had with navigating the locker room this past season. This is what he had to say in that recent report. Winning a championship that probably would have gotten Brad Stevens another five to six years with his voice having power. You lose some of that steam when they just did not have that success this year. I think they are looking for more accountability out of that head coaching position because that's where his voice waned this year. Look, a lot to make of that report and a lot to take away from it. Shams is certainly legit. He's right up there with Woj as probably the two best basketball reporters out there. So it's really hard to refute that report coming from such a credible source. But here's my thing with saying something like that. The Celtics this past year finished the year 500. I understand it was a maddening and frustrating season. They went out in the first round to an elite Brooklyn Nets team, but they were crushed time and time again by injury issues and COVID issues. Jason Tatum had to use an inhaler prior to games because he had trouble breathing. The big deadline deal for the Celtics was Evan Fournier. He was gone for weeks because of COVID. So too was Tristan Thompson. Marcus Smart was out for a long time because of that leg injury. Kemba Walker was going down as well. Jalen Brown was lost for the season at the end of the regular season in the playoffs because of that wrist injury. So at what point is there just nothing left to do as the head coach when guys are going down left and right and your stars are missing from the lineup and your best player who's on the borderline of being a top 10 guy and MVP candidate in Jason Tatum has to use an inhaler just to get himself through games. That's a really, really difficult spot for Brad Stevens to be in. So my big question is this for all of you Celtics fans. Was Brad Stevens worn out or was he forced out? I think he was worn out with having to deal with all of those difficulties and all of those challenges throughout this past season. We're not talking about some stiff as a head coach in the NBA. We're talking about one of the brightest minds as a head coach across the entire league, and he certainly deserves that respect because his resume as a head coach, really, really impressive. Seven straight playoff appearances from 2015 to 2021. He took the Celtics to the Eastern Conference Finals three times. That's no slouch. Had an overall record of 354 and 282. That's nearly a 60% winning percentage. Brad Stevens is a legitimate head coach. I don't think he lost control of the locker room. I think he deserves respect. I just think he was worn out from having to deal with all of these challenges because constantly from the start of the season, it was an uphill battle. This is a team that made it to the Eastern Conference Finals last year. So I'm not saying that I'm going to say that Shams is a fraud. Maybe there is some truth to that report. But let's not act like Brad Stevens was a horrible head coach because the resume certainly points to that not being the case. I voice my opinion. What do you think? Did Brad Stevens lose the locker room? Let me know in the comment section down below. Type L for it. Yes, he lost it. Type F for fake news. Do that right now and be sure to get your votes in. As for who's going to take Brad Stevens' role as the head man of this franchise, according to Jake Fisher, 
Those within the Boston Celtics organization reached out to Jake Fisher of Bleacher Report and said, this is what we are valuing. This is what we're looking for. A black head coach is a top priority for the franchise. The Celtics are also valuing previous head coaching experience. Now, Celtics assistant, now former assistant, Jerome Allen, who was once the head coach of the University of Pennsylvania, did interview with Brad Stevens for the job. He is now going to the Detroit Pistons to take an assistant role under Dwayne Casey. Other inter interview requests, excuse me, that are in for the head coaching vacancy. Darvin Ham and Charles Lee, both assistants with the Milwaukee Bucks. The Celtics have put in interview requests to interview those guys for the head coaching vacancy. Emi Udoka, he's an assistant with the Nets right now. Celtics also want to interview him. Jamal Mosley figures to interview as well. He's a current assistant with the Dallas Mavericks, and I know this name excites a lot of people in and around Boston or Celtics fans nationwide and worldwide. Chauncey Billups also figures to interview for Brad Stevens' former job as the post of this franchise as well. So who do you want to be the next head coach of the Boston Celtics. Give me a name in the comment section down below. We've talked about a few guys on the channel. We gave you a list of potential candidates. Maybe it's Becky Hammond. Maybe it's Carol Lawson. Maybe it's one of those guys who the Celtics want to interview. Be sure to leave those names in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed to Celtics today by Chat Sports, I mean, what are you doing? You're making a huge mistake. We're inching closer and closer to 6,000 subscribers, and we're bringing you the latest news and rumors around the Celtics during what is going to be a pivotal offseason during NBA free agency. So either hit that red subscribe button down below, go to youtube.com slash Celtics TV, and be sure to turn on those notifications. Therefore, anytime we push a video out, you will be notified.